All right, so now that we got levels of organization down, we're going to focus on one of them, which is population. Specifically, we're going to be looking at population dynamics, which is how populations change. Just to refresh, population is all the members of a species living in the same area at the same time. Population size is the number of organisms in a population. So here we have a population size of 8. Population density is the number of organisms per unit area. So when you look at the same size area, you see if there are more or less of a population in that area. On the left, we see we have a more dense population because there's more geese present in that area than on the right where the population is less dense. So here we have a red and a blue box. They're both the same size. You write down which color box has the more dense population of trees and which has the less dense population of trees. I'll wait. Bien trabajo. So now let's look at population dispersion. Population dispersion is how populations are spread out in an area. There's three patterns of distribution. Random, regular, and clumped. Random is exactly what it sounds like. Individuals can be found anywhere in the area. Regular are when individuals are uniformly spaced throughout the area and clumped is when individuals are found in groups throughout the area. So here's three pictures of different tree populations. Each one exhibits a different pattern of distribution. You can identify on your paper which tree population matches each pattern of distribution. If we look at spatial distribution, or how organisms are spread out across the globe, we see that no population can live in any habitat in the biosphere. Organisms need specific temperatures, humidity, rainfall, and sunlight. So this polar bear population won't do well in the rainforest on the left. It's going to need to occupy a polar habitat like that on the right. Which brings us to population limiting factors. A limiting factor is any abiotic or biotic factor that restricts or limits the numbers, reproduction, or distribution of organisms. The population of fish in this lake, for example, could be limited by the size of the lake or how many other organisms are in the lake. There are two types of limiting factors density independent and density dependent. Density independent factors are limiting factors in the environment that does not depend on the number of members in a population per unit area. Think of some examples of density independent factors. What could limit a population in an area that has nothing to do with how many members are living in that population. Muy bien. Weather or natural disasters are density independent factors that can limit a population and it doesn't matter the size of the population in that area. If a tornado or wildfire sweeps through an area, it don't care the size of the population there, it's going to take it out. Tornado don't care. Density dependent factors are limiting factors that do depend on the number of members in a population in the area. Can you think of anything that can limit how much a population can grow that depends on the population density? Muy 
Predation, parasites, disease, competition, all depend on the number of organisms in an area. The population of predators will depend on the population of prey. And the same goes for parasites and hosts. Diseases are more easily spread when there's more individuals in an area. And with more individuals in an area, you're going to have more competition for the resources in the area. The rate at which population grows, or the growth rate, can be affected by emigration and immigration. Emigration is the number of individuals moving away or out of a population. Immigration is the number of individuals moving into a population. You can remember that immigration is in a population. Bars.